One question that always bothered me is how I should deal with security updates on applications that are running in Docker containers. So security updates are often done automatically on Linux servers and that for good reasons. Usually this is done by the package managers that will update all installed applications but as Docker containers or the applications inside these containers are isolated from the host OS, you cannot easily update them through the package manager itself. So in this video I will show you how to easily update all your Docker containers automatically with a nice open source application that you can easily deploy on your Docker environment. Hi, my name is Christian and I make tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream a lot on YouTube and Twitch where I sometimes do some Q&As or some live coding and live hacking. So if you have any questions for me, just jump into my live streams. It's always a lot of fun. So in this video, I will show you how to deal with automatic updates of your Docker containers. I recently found a nice application that is called Watchtower. So this is an open source application that will run on your Docker server and it will monitor all running Docker containers. Once it finds a new image version for a specific container, it will automatically pull down the new image version, stop the container and recreate it with a new version. It also comes with some advanced configurations. So for example, if you don't want to include all running containers in the update procedure, you can specifically say which containers should be included or excluded from the update procedure. Of course, you can also schedule those updates and I will show you some tips and tricks to minimize the downtime during those update processes. And as always, you don't need to remember any commands or links I'm using in this video. Just have a look at the description below. There you will find a link to my written blog article. Read the full tutorial and just copy and paste all the commands. So let's go. Okay, so for a short presentation, I've just prepared a new Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server with Docker and Docker Compose already installed. And I have also deployed a simple test container. When we execute a Docker PS, we can see there's one container with an engine X web server currently running. So I've just created this one, but let's assume you're running a few containers here and this image is a bit older and you have not frequently updated those images. You can just deploy Watchtower in a simple Docker container. So this will automatically pull down all new images and restart the containers with a new version. So to deploy Watchtower on a server that is running Docker, you can easily run this with a simple command. So just execute Docker run, give it a name like Watchtower, for example, and we also need to add a volume in the var run docker.soc and point this to the same location inside the container. So this is very important because otherwise the Watchtower container doesn't have any permissions to connect to the Docker API that is currently running on this local server. So this is very important here. We also need to use the official Watchtower image from container with three hours, by the way, and the image is called Watchtower. So the Watchtower container is now up and running and you can see it was just recently deployed. It started the Watchtower and scheduled the first run for the update procedure tomorrow at the same time. So by default, this update procedure interval is one day, but you can also modify that if you want to. But let me also demonstrate what will happen if the first run is scheduled. So let's stop the container and also remove that because we want to redeploy this with other options here. So we will basically use the same command. At the end of the docker run command, you can also specify some arguments. So we will use the double dash run once. So th this argument would say that the watchtower container is only running once and after an update procedure, it will immediately exit. And once you want to get some more output of the logging, you also should add a double dash debug here. So let's redeploy the container and let's have a look at the log files. So you can see right at the beginning, it just runs one time update and checking all containers for updated image. It retrieves the running containers locally and trying to load some credentials, but we don't need it in this case, actually. So you can see at the end, there's no pull needed. It's just simply skipping the image and it would just continue to run the same procedure for all running Docker containers. So note this is important. If you're always using the latest version of the Docker images, for example, the Nginx column latest, Watchtower will automatically update them. But if you want to prevent any containers from being updated and you want to use a very specific version, 
you should use an image with a version tag. So Watchtower will not update these images because you have specified a version tag in this image. But sometimes you still want to have the latest image of a Docker container, but you don't want to include it in the update procedure because you need to update that container manually for some reason. So you also have the option in Watchtower to exclude specific containers or to monitor only these uh, containers and to make the update still manually. So this is the official Watchtower documentation website and if you go to the container selection there's a very very good and detailed documentation how this will work. So there are two options here the fully exclude you can choose to exclude containers entirely from being watched or monitor them only. Here's a good explanation how you can do this. So you simply just need to attach a label to the containers you're running. So this is not configured on the Watchtower container itself, but for example, if you want to exclude the engine X image from being updated by Watchtower, you simply can just attach this label here to the Docker container. So let's also copy this here and redeploy our Nginx container and let's see what's happening here. So let's first stop the Nginx container and remove it and then we simply will redeploy it but we will add this label here. And we also want to run the watchtower command once again. So if we now execute it, you can see the log files are not saying that it's trying to update the Nginx container. And this is because we have deployed the Nginx container with the watchtower label that says it's not enabled. So this is how you can exclude specific containers from the update procedure. But let's also have a look at some advanced configuration because there are two things that I would strongly recommend you to do. The first one is I would strongly recommend you to schedule the updates because if you just do that at a random time, it may result in some service outages. And usually in a big environment, you will need to schedule those updates to a specific time. And the second thing I also would recommend you is to clean up old images because the old images are still stored on the system. But if you want to clean them up, you can also include this in the watchtower run command. So let's also have a look at this. Okay, so let's deploy our watchtower container persistently, but we don't want to run it once. So let's remove this attribute here. And as I said, I just want you to add two attributes here. The first one is a clean up. So this will automatically delete all Docker images that are not needed on the system anymore. And we also want to schedule our updates. So add double dash a schedule and then we need to enter a cruntup expression when we want to schedule our update. So to understand how cruntup expressions are working, we need to have a look at the documentation. And you can see in the scheduling documentation, it will require a cron expression in six fields rather than a traditional five. So this is very important. So here's a quick example, two zeros, four and then three asterisks. So to have a look at what this actually means, we need to click on cron expression and there's a detailed explanation how the cron expression format is working with six digits here. So if you want to customize your scheduling, you should take a look at this documentation and really get through this and understand how this is working. There are also some predefined schedules that may even help you to understand this. So for example, if I want to run the updates on 4 a.m. 30, we want to start with the first is the second is zero and we will start with a 30 for 30 minutes and we want to add a 4 for 4 a.m. 30 and we want to run this every day every week and every month so let's hit enter and see what watchtower comes up with and this would run every day I know the cron expression may sound a bit weird to you when you hear it the first time and I can strongly recommend you to just go through some of the examples to better understand how this is working but I hope this short explanation also helped you to understand it. It's also often used in Linux environments by the way because cron jobs are actually working the same way so if you want to learn more about automated or scheduled tasks on Linux systems you need to have a look at this anyway. By the way, you can also deploy Watchtower in a portainer environment. So I have done that on my system. So if you have a look at these log files here, you can see there was an update for this container and you see how these log files are looking when Watchtower actually does an update. So if you want to deploy this on a portainer environment, you just need to add a new container and the command attributes like the scheduling, you need to enter in this section here as a command. So you can just click on override and then just simply add schedule and then your cron expression. And you also need to add a debug and the clean up statement in the commands on Portainer. 
By the way, if you don't know about Portainer, this is a very nice and clean web UI to manage your entire Docker server. I've recently made a video about how to install that on an Ubuntu server and how to use it to manage your Docker environment. So if you want to learn more about this, just check out my video about Portainer. And if you enjoyed this video and this was helpful to you, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorials and content for IT professionals. And if you're struggling somewhere or you have any questions to me, just join our Discord. Discord community. I'm actually very active there and I try to answer all of your questions and we have a very very friendly and respectful community. So before I go I want to give a quick shout out to all my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason who is the producer of this show. And if you want to support my mission to help as many people as possible to jump in the field of IT and become IT professionals, then you can just support me on Patreon. So thanks everybody for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I see you soon.